following widespread bipartisan criticism, and maybe Republicans will learn something from this, President Trump announced on Saturday that next year's G7 summit will no longer be held at his Doral Resort in Florida. Republicans had an impact. The announcement came in a series of tweets where the president wrote in Park Vote, I thought I was doing something very good for our country. No, people don't like bed bugs by using our Trump National Doral in Miami for hosting the G7. OK, OK, so, 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 so first of all, so we let, we're going to we're going to read through these. But here. he's, he's not, you know, advertising. I'm not no, reading no, his no, advertisement. No, no, this is, no, this is what I'm going to say. Unless I mention bed bugs. It shows oh, it. just how corrupt. <laughs> This man is as president of the United States and the corruption, the stealing from American taxpayers, the using of his office to stuff his pockets with corrupt dollars. It's all laid out. Listen to this advertisement in a presidential tweet, which this is a, an official White House statement, according to the White House. It is big, grand on hundreds of acres next to Miami International Airport, has tremendous ballroom <coughs> and meeting rooms, and each delegation would have had its own 50 to 70 unit building with anything blah, blah, blah goes on. Uh, so, you know, Nick uh, Confessori, uh, he, he keeps going on talking about how great uh, his own... Uh, well, hold on. It's good stuff, though. It's amazing. Hear it's Nick. amazing stuff, Nick. And it's just a, it's just a straight out advertisement, a straight out advertisement for a property that he owns. Liberals, moderates, conservatives, they all know it's corrupt. And most of them, other than Marco Rubio, actually said, you know what? That's corrupt. You can't do it. Oh, and besides, it violates the Constitution of the United States. And yet he was going to do it anyway. Well, first of all, Joe, in any prior administration, Obama, Bush, uh, that tweet alone from what is his de facto official account for the presidency would have prompted an ethics investigation. That tweet of alone, the advertising. <clears throat> now, I don't understand how we've gotten to this place where the president thinks that we think that the only hotels that exist in the entire world and the entire country to host these meetings are his hotels. But the U.S. is a very big country. We have many beautiful hotels, great hotels, big hotels. I do feel bad for Marco Rubio. He got over his skis to defend this. And boy, the president just comes back and cancels it, you know, and admits the whole thing was a problem. But of course it was a problem. And there is something to think about here. The fact that he did this, this provocation, in the middle of a gathering impeachment storm says something about the president's mentality and the situation that his entire staff is dealing with. When, how do you handle a principle like this? If you're Mulvaney, just imagine trying to defend what is basically indefensible. And the way you do it is basically, if you're Richard Nixon and you put that I'm not a crook on a campaign t-shirt, right? That's basically what we're seeing here. Admit it go hard at it, say, so what? What's the big deal? Everyone does it, but of course, we don't. Yeah. All right, so here's Mick Mulvaney, what he said yesterday, that the president <laughs> was surprised at the level of pushback he received for his Doral plan. At the end of the day, you know, he still considers himself to be uh, in the hospitality business, and he saw an opportunity to take uh, the, the biggest leaders from around the world, and he wanted to put on the absolute best uh, show, the best visit that he possibly could, and he was very comfortable doing that drow. And I think we were all surprised at the level of pushback. I think it's the right decision to change. We'll have to find someplace else, and my guess is we'll find someplace else that the media won't like um, either f uh, for another reason. I, I just have to pick up. You say he considers himself in the hospitality sure. business. He's the president of the United States. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Jonathan Lemire, I saw a quote in the Times. This is really all too much. I saw a quote in the Times where this guy uh, acting like a clown, actually, people, say, people around the White House are saying now, well, you know, he doesn't really consider being president of the United <laughs> States his first job. He still considers himself to be in the hospitality business. I mean, first of all, think about that for a second, if you will, proving once again the guy never wanted never wanted to be elected president, never expected to be elected president. It was 
a branding exercise that went horribly wrong for Donald Trump and America. Melania and the entire family. All that being said, here you have once again Mick Mulvaney. I just, it, his stupidity is so insulting. Either that or his cynicism. You you may know him. So I, I, is he stupid? Is he cynical? When he says something like, "Oh, we're going," you know what we're going to do? We're going going out. Oh God, they didn't like Doral. And he talks really quickly, like we can't keep up with his words. Does that work in South Carolina, Mick? Does that work in the deep south? No. I'm from the deep south, and I can actually keep up with your <laughs> words. So and he goes, you know, the thing is, I, I really, I, I, so we're going to go and try to find somewhere else. We won't go to Doral. I guess we'll go to another golf course, which, or another resort, which, of course, I'm sure the media won't like that either. I mean, seriously, the stupidity in that. He knows Donald Trump went out of his way to select his own property, a property that's been failing for seven, several years, a property where they have a bed bug problem. They're having to settle for bed bugs. A property that for the most part, because it's in the summer in South Florida, I know what summer in South Florida is like. Ooh. It's hot. I also know this. There are a lot of empty rooms in Doral in the middle of summer. So even if he was doing it at a cost, this would have accrued greatly to the benefit of Donald J. Trump hospitality guy, I guess we're supposed to call him now instead of president of the United States. So it's all corrupt. It's unconstitutional. And it is. It's exactly I read in The New York Times or maybe it's a Washington Post, somebody saying this would be like somebody running a country in Africa and stealing money out of a gold mine and just, you know, putting it in a safe in their presidential office. That's exactly what this is. And it doesn't matter how fast McElvaney talks. We can still figure it out. I, it's really perhaps one of the bl most blatantly corrupt things the most corrupt president in the history of the United States did. Another statistic for you, non-Yankee division, is that the occupancy rate in Doral in June is usually about 37 percent. Uh, and, of course, June is... Wait, can I ask you a question? Wow. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Okay, so hold on a second. So I'm doing a pie chart here. Okay. So that's, I think this is about... <clears throat> that's a little too big. So this is, this is the subset for the 37 percent. I'm wondering, of that 37 percent, how many of that 37 percent are bed bugs? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do a further analysis of that, Joe, but it might be a large percentage. It's also June, mm -hmm. as you know, is the beginning of hurricane season in South Florida. Uh, there are lots mm -hmm. of reasons. As Nick points out, oh there are God. a lot of great hotels in this country. Maybe not all of them are so close to Miami International Airport, where the planes, as I've, I've spent time there covering the president during his campaign, the planes thunder right overhead. It may not always be the most relaxing That's a destination. Bad uh, That's a horrible What location. we saw here, though, is... And Mulvaney saying the thing about the president viewing himself being in the hospitality business is something that you do hear occasionally in the White House. You just don't usually hear it on the record on live television on a Sunday talk show. Uh, hey, you now, know what, Lemire? Get over it. Okay? Yeah, I will. That is a get final, over it. This was a moment, though. Get over it, baby. This, this was a moment, though, where Republicans did push back. And the final straw here was on Saturday. Mick Mulvaney took some moderate Republicans to Camp David. He has these meetings every so often up there. The president called in did sort of a poll in the room because he'd heard so much criticism of his decision about Doral, including a lot on Fox News from usually supportive hosts and surrogates. And a number of the representatives who were there at Camp David, according to the reporting, expressed their misgivings and said that it was a hard thing to defend on top of all the other things they have to defend right now, including the Syria decision and the impeachment inquiry. And that, that for the president was the final straw. He's decided to move on. They'll announce another site uh, in the coming days. And I think we should all brace ourselves. He'll cancel from Doral and maybe give it to Bedminster. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Bedminster, of course. We can see Rudy, Rudy walking out uh, before 6 p.m., not after. <laughs> no. So, you know, um, like by the way, that reminds me, we really should uh, talk about Republicans who really made a difference here. That they uh, did. They had, they had the retreat. They were talking to the president. They spoke up. That was so important uh, for their country that they did that. I, I saw a Tom Cole quote, Peter King, a couple of Republicans, conservative Republicans who support Donald Trump, but just said, hey, no, this, this just call. isn't right. This is the wrong call. And I think that sends a message, should send a message to, to all Republicans that you can have a positive impact on this president and stop him from driving the car over the cliff. You're not doing him a favor 
if you do, as Marco Rubio said last week, oh, I think it's great. I think it's fantastic that the president of the United States is committing an impeachable offense and an unconstitutional offense and being corrupt and actually using his position as president of the United States to bring the G7 to a failing country club. That, see, that doesn't do him good. What does him good is when people like Peter King or, or, or people, uh, people like Tom Cole and others said, wait, no, 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 no. This, this just isn't right. You can't do this. So Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.